Thank you and, and good morning. So uh, I'm a researcher at Akunan. I do. Uh, I'm a data scientist, basically. I'm a physicist. I've been doing data science for a few years now. I'm going to talk about uh, this huge problem that we have in Mexico and in the Caribbean, in fact, with sargassum. Sargassum is, is this algae which floats, so it has these tiny uh, gas-filled chambers that, that make it float, and it, it drifts freely uh, along the sea. And it's been known for a, a long time, so from the 15th century, the uh, Portuguese study explorers saw sargassum on, on the seas. But uh, as of late, in recent years, there has been huge uh, beaching events, so these huge blooms where the, the algae uh, grow to unseen uh, uh, masses, and they arrive at, at the seas of the Caribbean, right? So here we have a, a, a few pictures of the Yucatan beaches, mainly uh, the Mayan Riviera has been uh, very strongly affected by this. And so far it's a problem that we don't really understand why it's happening now. It's been very variable year to year. So we have had uh, approximately since 2014 these very big and year to the next is very variable. We don't understand the, the causes of the problem so far. So um, changes. Uh, this, this has been called the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt by uh, uh, Chuan Min Hu, which is uh, one of the main researchers in the world doing sargassum research. So the causes of this are not understood so far. Uh, it's mainly uh, probably due to new, new sources of nutrients arriving at the equatorial and, and, and Atlantic uh, region between Africa and, and South America. So you can see in the picture there, uh, it's a very big belt that goes from the coast of West Africa up to the Caribbean and Florida. And then right so uh, it's not clear why this is happening. It might be related to climate change, to changes in sea surface temperatures. We still don't know. This is a problem so far for science. And the problem with, with these uh, big arrivals of sargassum is that they have a big ecological impact both marine ecosystems. So even though they are part of ecosystems and they've been part of ecosystems since a long time, the, the very huge mass that we're seeing nowadays have uh, thrown the balance off, so to speak. So when they arrive at beaches, uh, they die on the beach and that releases uh, chemicals, acids, that damage the beaches, that damage coastal ecosystems. Also, the, the, the simple act of blocking light when they float near, near the coast is a big danger to corals and sea grasses. So the impacts are really big. And of course, we also have the economic impacts. The Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico is mainly reliable on tourism uh, as a primary way of industry. And so when uh, these beautiful beaches of the Mexican Caribbean are invaded by, by this algae, uh, it's a big problem for them. Also for the fishing industries in the zone because they, they interfere with navigation and, and they make uh, uh, fisheries also. So in Mexico, we, uh, there have been a few uh, initiatives to monitor at least the, the arri arrival of algae uh, along the coast. So you can see, oh, sorry. Uh, the, one of the of the forms is, of course, just picking it up from the beach. So that, that's what hotels have been doing for, for a few years now. Also, recently, they installed these uh, barriers that block the arriving uh, a few hundred meters from the coast, so they don't reach the beaches. But of course, because of the size of the problem, this is not really a long-term solution. We need to better understand the problem in order to have a solution. So I'm going to talk very briefly about two projects that I've been involved, involved with. One of them is uh, trying to understand what economic uh, aspects can be involved in, in this matter. So uh, the problem is, once that you have sargassum on the beach, maybe we can stop it from arriving, but we can do something with it. Because if we can find economic uses for sargassum, then we can try to offset the costs of collection and the impact that it does. So uh, the project I've been working on is, uh, with a, uh, is a government grant trying to study several uses of sargassum so we can extract chemicals like alginates from the sargassum plant which can be used in, in many industries, like ph pharmaceutical in industries and cosmetic industries. We can also use the biomass of sargassum itself, the bagasse, as a, as a fertilizer, which will be very useful for the region because uh, the, 
the south uh, west uh, southeastern part of Mexico is a very uh, uh, late in agriculture. Also, the oil can be used as biodiesels or for action inhibitors. So this group has been doing the economic analysis, trying to measure or to compare these options in very dim various dimensions. So the economic aspect, of course, but also what ecological impact each of these options has, the social, the technical aspects of it, in order to try to make a, a recommendation for the government. And the local is also in the region. The other part of, of, of the, the question is, OK, so maybe I can do some things with the at the coast, but uh, how? Where is it? Where? When is it going to arrive? So I've been working personally in this part, which is the satellite detection and forecast of arriving of sargassum. So this has been been done by Tramin uh, Schuh's group, mainly in the in the United States, in the University of South Florida. They have this algorithm by an FI that can detect the sargassum from satellite observations. So in Mexico uh, last year, as, par uh, as part of the Ocean Hackathon 2019, uh, two uh, government agencies, uh, one, one of them is CONABIO, which is the uh, uh, Mexican national agency in charge of biodiversity, monitoring biodiversity. So they, they launched a challenge in this competition, the Ocean Hackathon 2019, uh, in order to see what people could do about improving the detection of how this is done, satellite or images. So uh, the team that I was in, we, we were uh, a very much multidisciplinary team, physicists, biologists, and programmers, and engineers. And we won the team with this project. So the competition, I mean. So what we did uh, was improve upon what is being done. Uh, so far, people do detection of sargassum at one kilometer spatial resolution using mainly US satellites. So what we wanted to do is improve upon that in two ways. One is using uh, Sentinel-2 data, which is a uh, part of the Copernicus program here in the European Union. So these are very high resolution satellites that take pictures at 20, 10 to 60 meters, but in fact we use a 20 meter imagery. And what we did was um, take the algorithms that exist nowadays, apply these algorithms to Sentinel-2 data, and then use machine learning to improve upon that. So we, we take these detections and we feed them to the algorithms, and they learn to recognize uh, what aspects of the satellite data reveal the presence of the algae, and then we can do predictions with that. So we did a, a very simple algorithm that takes uh, these uh, Sentinel-2 images, and produces the detection at 20 meter resolution. When we compared what we, what we get, uh, you can see on the left, that's the traditional algorithm. And you can see on the right, the detection from our algorithm based on machine learning. You can see that the filaments, uh, the lines of, of white dots, which are sargassum detections in a very small region near Cozumel, are ver very much clearer and very much well defined. So you can see that, that there is some improvement to be made just by feeding uh, data that are already being computed, already, already being made available online. Just feeding it with learning algorithms and you can make a, a much better detection about that. So uh, what we did then is take the, this, the, the product, the, the result of, of the algorithm, and translate this into uh, a product, a data product that, that can be used by community. So we made a, a very simple demo of uh, using open source tools like these, Leaflet and OpenStreetMap, in order to take this geographic information that comes from the algorithm and then mapping it in an interactive web map that everybody can, can uh, navigate. Uh, this so far covers uh, a big region near the Caribbean for last year, and also we did some analysis in, in uh, French islands because it was a French competition, so we did the Guadeloupe and the Mar Mar Martinique, uh, also detection there. And the idea now is to integrate this algorithm into the, this monitoring system that uh, the Mexican government has. Uh, they, so far, it uses the uh, Chumin's Who's algorithm, but we, they also want to have our algorithm as a data layer in this system. So the idea is that uh, it's public, so anyone in Mexico and anyone in the world can uh, just go here and see the, the detections for the day. 
Uh, with Sentinel-2 data, we have uh, one uh, image approximately every three to five days. So that there's still room of improvement there in, in, in integrating other satellites to have a, have a more complete coverage. And what's next, uh, we, we want to validate the, these detections with in situ observation, that, that's an important part. So far with the, the first uh, project, I have a, a, a collaboration to use drones from the coast in order to, to photograph the some kilometers uh, from, from the coast to see if the satellite uh, detections do match with reality, which they should. We also uh, would like to use the, this high, resol high resolution detection, so for the sargassum, in order to direct uh, the collection efforts. Because so far, there's been proposal in Mexico. And in fact, the government has given a lot of money to, to uh, sargassum collecting boats that, that will go to the ocean. But of course, with the amount of mass arriving, it's impossible to collect it all. So the point is trying to direct these efforts more efficiently. So where should the boat go and when in order to intercept uh, a mass of sargassum that will likely hit uh, a populated area along the coast. We also, uh, I'm very interested personally in integrating this high spatial resolution data with high time frequency data. As I said, the Sentinel data is one image for, uh, for, for every four or five days, but we also have geostationary satellites. Uh, the US has the GOES constellation, but there's a couple of satellites that have uh, a 10 minute uh, 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 delay time. So you have one image of the Caribbean or any part of, of the world, in fact, well, of any part of the world, and resolution. So integrate this high spatial resolution data with high time frequency will be very useful in creating useful predictions because we'll be able to see how the sargassum moves uh, in, in the images, which we cannot do right now with uh, five day resolution. And finally, of course, maybe even an idea for the this year's hackathon, which will also be in Mexico City this year, is to see uh, what kind of uh, citizen sciences apps we can come up with so that both people in, in the coast of Mexico and in the Caribbean in general can see these predictions uh, of where sargassum is and where it will arrive and also report that they, that they saw sargassum along a certain spot on the coast so we can, re we can do a feedback and, and do a validation and calibration of the models and data, data detection. So thank you very much. In the back. Now we have, and because so far we've been doing uh, optical and infrared satellite imagery only because the, the, the algorithms that are published for detection of sargassum work with a few bands in the infrared and the optical regime. So, Sentinel-3 is radar, right? What, what is it? It's an optical, uh, an optical instrument, which is a radar. One is a radar. Okay, so, so uh, also infrared and optical bands, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, lo a lower resolution, but this is okay. Okay. So, okay. And I was wondering also if you can integrate uh, this, uh, uh, say, this, the, the identification of this drift broadcast. Yeah, we haven't done that, but that's on the horizon, of course, okay. trying to do with models.